Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you very much for joining this Libra webinar on library carpentry and teaching data science skills. Uh, my name is Friel Grant. I'm in charge of communications at Libra. Um, I'm obviously not Birgit Schmidt, who would normally be hosting this webinar today, but unfortunately, she's been delayed. So I'm jumping in here uh, to get the webinar started. Thank you for your patience in, uh, in terms of the slightly delayed start time. I'll just go right ahead and uh, introduce you to our speakers today. They are Chris Erdman. He's the uh, he's from the library carpentry community, so he's going to talk to us about library carpentry. We'll also be hearing from Julianne Schneider and David Kane, and they're organizing a library carpentry instructor training this year. So they'll tell us about that. Um, a few housekeeping notes just before we get started. The webinar is being recorded. Uh, we'll share a recording of the webinar with everyone who's attending today and we'll send you a link directly and we'll also put it on social media and on YouTube afterwards. Uh, the slides can be downloaded on Zenodo and if you look in the chat box, you'll see the link there. And if you have any questions at all, you can put them in the chat box and we'll put them to the speakers following the presentation. So with that, I'll hand over to Chris for his presentation. Thanks, Friedel. Uh, so uh, as Friedel said, I'm Chris, uh, and Julian will be joining us shortly, too, to talk about the instructor training, and, uh, and David will as well. Uh, but I wanted to start off um, with a little bit of background. Um, so um, one of the things we are seeing, um, a lot of us are seeing these days, is that this is a, there's an increasing need for um, software and data skills in our work. Um, at, at many disciplines are seeing the, these changes, seeing this need um, for these skill sets. Um, and it's something that we hadn't uh, necessarily received in curriculum or in our daily work. Um, it's not, we're not the only ones. Um, I pulled up this uh, report uh, from the N NSF uh, where they looked at um, this, uh, this need uh, that they were seeing uh, for, for software and data skills that they hadn't seen in the in the programs, the curriculum in, in universities, is who they were trying to address, um, you know, the, the trying to address this and fill this gap. Uh, one of the things that they highlighted in, in that um, report uh, was this more slow in data science environments, which was one of these uh, programs that sort of filled this gap um, that brought all this sort of all, all these interdisciplinary um, uh, efforts together around data science. Um, and one of the interesting things around that was that the, the libraries were sort of instrumental and in helping bring, bring people together, but also um, the fact that uh, they leveraged the carpentries, the training program we'll be talking about a little bit later. Um, but it's, it's, not just the, it's not just the US, it's everywhere we're seeing, um, seeing, seeing um, committees come together, uh, reports, uh, being made and, and plans for how to integrate uh, data science training or, or you know software and data skills in curriculum or in our professional uh, lives. And here's another report, this open science report from the European Commission uh, that that talks about how uh, you know Europe can can respond and and do the same and and try and integrate training um, not just for early career uh, um, professionals but also um, all all throughout career life cycle. Um, another thing is, uh, so we follow this, um, follow this, uh, this newsletter that actually has stopped. Um, but before that, it was quite helpful in tracking all the initiatives that were happening in, in data science. And you can see there, there are many programs. Um, I believe all of these are in the U.S. Um, but um, there are many also in other places where people are trying to come together. And, and build these sort of data science efforts, bring um, communities together uh, to tackle data and software in, in, in new ways. Um, and it's not just, it's not just uh, universities, not just academia. Um, there's this report, Investing in America's Data Science and Analytics Talent, that was re released by T PwC. And it was a result of industry leaders and, and academic leaders coming together and I, I, I thought one of the compelling things from that was that business leaders were saying, we need data skills, um, we're, we're, we're desperate for this, um, and that academia was sort of uh, still trying to figure out how they could, they could do this, that only 23% um, said they were ready. Um, 
So that was a compelling report. Um, another, another one, this one comes from Software Sustainability Institute in the UK, um, where it sort of highlights this, uh, this increasing need for software and, and, and all, the, all the domains as well. It really runs research. Um, so you have a number of these scripts that run, um, these interconnected scripts that run uh, research. And um, the people that are developing these are not getting the training that they need that they you know i'm sure as an anecdote anecdote uh, um uh, many of you work in libraries and um one of the things that i often saw um what were early career researchers coming in and ask, asking for every book on python or r um, because they're being asked to develop software for their labs or for their groups or for their for their uh projects so it's a it's a huge need there's uh, not enough training um in, in current curriculum uh, for helping people develop um, good software too. Um, here's an example, uh, and actually a good example, we, we hear a lot of um, from Retraction Watch or Reproducibility Crisis. I think reproducibility has always been a challenge. Um, one, of, one of the things that, um, that that's really uh, good to see is these examples of groups that have have taken training, have done things in in their workflows to respond to questions about which version of data did you use for this paper, or you know which which software version. And so this group um, that comes from the Ocean Health Index, they they took this training, they took Carpentry's training, and and really changed their workflows so that they could respond to questions like these and be more organized and be more efficient in the way that they're doing. Uh, their research. Um, one of the other things you've seen is that these surveys, um, this is one from Australia in the bioinformatics community that, that highlights this sort of need for training um, that people are not, not getting um, in their programs uh, at, you know, at their universities. Um, there's Another one from the NSF that highlights the sort of same same thing, um, and I have seen the same in in my career in a survey that that um, we once did in astronomy, where astronomers also said that they were um, they they too were interested in training that they were not getting the training that they need in in uh, developing software or doing proper research data management. Um, another thing from the library's perspective, and, and it was good seeing, so someone who participated in this report is on this call, Jeanette Ekstrom, um, and she's at DTU Library. Um, this was a group of people that came together from, um, from different perspectives, and we met in Pittsburgh um, uh, to, to, to understand how libraries could sort of respond to what we're seeing, this shift um, to data and software skills that we're seeing. And one of the things that came up in that report was often the carpentries as, as something that could help fill these gaps to help us um, with the with helping our community. Um, and so you can see that it was mentioned many times in this report. Um, another another just recent blog post too by Elaine Westbrooks, who's the university librarian at University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill. And she talks too about using sort of the carpentries as this um, connection, this connected tissue at, um, at your institution um, of really bringing all these different groups together and, and responding to these needs uh, for, um, for data skills and software skills, um, bringing the library back as this sort of this research hub where people come together and, and uh, learn about all these different things. Um, and, and it sort of breaks this cycle too of uh, departments and labs trying to do this over and over again with groups that meet up um, that you know understand this need and then the graduate students and postdocs leaving and then a new group coming in and saying we need to do this again we need to to talk about tools we need to talk about new approaches and you see this happening all over the place um, uh, just because uh, people move around often but the library represents continuity and so this is these are sort of the, really the big points um, behind Elaine's uh, blog post. Um, so about mining these gaps and how do we scale? Um, um, because it really is an effort um, to try and train people um, 
in these skills. And um, that's where the Carpentries come in. Um, so Carpentries is a nonprofit, um, teaches data, data science skills um, for more effective work and career development. Um, it, it tries to make this material more accessible, approachable, um, ac applicable. So it's not like a computer science course. It's something that you can apply to your current work um, you know, really to start you know, helping Im improve the way you do things like that ocean health index uh, example I mentioned earlier. And this is a group of volunteers. These are volunteer instructors that have become certified um, and, and that, you know, train around the world. Um, and, and in many ways, this is peer to peer uh, learning. Uh, so it's your peers um, training. So you could have Librarians teaching researchers, researchers teaching librarians, librarians teaching librarians, researchers teaching researchers. And so it re really helps to have sort of this peer-to-peer -peer, um, approach um, to make it more accessible. And the lessons are open and collaboratively developed. They're on GitHub. Um, and so we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit um, later. And, and one of the things that we value in the Carpentries is creating that supportive community um, you know, really helping each other out and helping people feel like they belong. Um, so, uh, what is a workshop like? Um, it's two days. Um, the, the workshops that we teach um, are two days usually. Um, and there's some flexibility in the library domain because we don't really get a, um, the chance to get enough time off. Uh, so, that's something that's really more important for library, library carpentry, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But it's active learning, um, and you can see there's feedback always. So we have these post-it notes that we use that sort of signal that you need help. Um, so you have, you know, red or green one. It, it really de depends on the colors that the post-its that you have available, and then you use these post-its for feedback as well um, during the course. So you we get a lot of active feedback, um, and we also do something called one up, one down, where we actually do feedback at the end. So we say what was challenging, what was positive about the, the learning. So it's really helpful for the instructors to see how they're, they're doing. Um, and all these instructors, this is a requirement of uh, an official uh, Carpentries workshop is that um, the instructors need to be certified um, instructors. Um, but anyone can take the material, anyone can use it. And I've seen many cases where um, people have done this um, and taught the material um, without being certified. Um, it's a friendly learning environment, like we, like I mentioned earlier, and um, we have a code of conduct that we stress and that we um, that we use um, in in our workshops. And so we really are serious about creating this environment where people feel like. Um, you know, everyone is welcome and, and all questions are welcomed and um, it's just a friendly environment for learning. Uh, so uh, focus, uh, sometimes people ask about these different uh, carpentries. One, you may have heard of software or data carpentry or library carpentry. They're all under one umbrella in the carpentries. And they have a different, these are sort of different paths and different focuses. Um, so data carpentry, has this sort of domain specific um, research data related focus. So um, you can, you know, you can be in the atmospheric sciences and um, you could have a context related to um, that, you know, to that domain. So data related to that domain, you're working on data related to that domain. And it's very helpful, um, you know, to, to have sort of that example in your domain. Um, and then software carpentry, um, is sort of domain agnostic. It 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 really helps with research workflows, um, but it also sort of tackles that software related question of how do I develop good um, practices, how do I use good practices in developing good software. Um, so that's that's uh, what software carpentry sort of tackles, and library carpentry um, speaks to uh, the library domain um, and and the context of you know how we work with data so with collections data is one example journal journal related data um and then um it has us look at our workflows so automating our workflows um there's still a lot of things that are done manually in libraries and and automation um can really um help and and allow you to sort of do um some of the some of the um other projects you've been meaning to get to um 
and and start other projects that, you know that have been on the back burner and then um it, it really helps with that community outreach the advocacy driven uh part to so connecting with your researchers your uh community um on these sort of data and software um skills this these this level of needs um so that's what library carpentry tackles um and um workshop goals are really to teach uh teach new skills um but really to get people started you can't learn everything all at once um it's it's like a stepping stone it's a it's it's a it gets you started and it allows you sort of to understand the resources that you need to learn further um but you really can't learn things in two days um so um most people just don't have that opportunity that chance though to get that jump start and uh and that encouragement too that's one of the things we provide is that encouragement as far as continued learning goes and having a community to sort of come back come back to and ask questions to and that positive learning experience sometimes um training experiences can be pretty um nerve-wracking um and and uh and they can move quickly and so that's one of the things we also strive to do is create that positive environment um, so this is a broad network. Um, it's uh, it's in a lot of co different countries. Uh, we have volunteers every everywhere it seems, um, and on seven continents. Actually, uh, a workshop was uh, taught in Antarctica not too long ago, um, and so reached a lot of learners, a lot a lot of uh, a, a lot of countries, a lot of people. Um, uh, one of the other things too to note is uh, um, the carpentry sort of the workshops really appeal to early career researchers. Um, so we mentioned that example of the um, early career researcher coming in the library and asking for every book on Python. Well, um, <laughs> that's that's who we see in these workshops is uh, a lot of these people, a lot of these early career researchers that don't have this opportunity to have a, a starting point to know where where they can start to learn about Python, learn about R learn about um, SQL, all these different tools and approaches. Um, and this this really helps them. Um, so we see, you know, we see a lot of graduate students, postdocs, um, e even undergraduate students as well in, in, in the workshops. Um, the instructor training, um, which Julian will talk about a little bit a little bit later, um, is is two days. It's usually online, but um, we're lucky we're going to have an uh, in-person one in Ireland and, and David and, and uh, Julian will talk about that later. Uh, one of the things that happens after you teach, uh, after you attend one of these uh, in-person or online instructor trainings um, is you you have to edit a lesson. You have to demonstrate that you can edit the lesson, um, contribute back to the community. Um, you, know, you have to attend a one hour discussion. Um, and so that's discussing how your workshop went, uh, what, what was a challenge? What was positive? And then a demo of your teaching style. And so that that's really what, what this is all about is the edu educational pedagogy. So people ask, do I need to know um, R Python before doing the training? It's about the pedagogy. It's about the style of teaching and not about the tools. And this is something you pick up later on. It takes it takes time. Um, it takes time to go through the, the material and learn it yourself. Um, and And so, you know that's one thing that's it's taken me time to actually learn all this as well and i have started off in, in in different ways um but i think that's a great approach to take is, is to take it in stride but you can also apply this to other things you're doing in your library work um so it could be um digital privacy um it could be um bibliometrics it could be anything that you're teaching and um, you could apply some of these concepts uh uh, you know, there, there's more again, like I said, the community is one one thing that we strive. We we strive to have these mentoring sessions. Um, we have email lists, we have discussion, discussion groups and community calls. And um, there's this opportunity to teach at other institutions. So you're a volunteer, you can sign up to, to teach at another institution um, and have sometimes your, your flight and or travel paid for um, to go to uh, train at another institution to teach. Um, but one of the things that um, is is important to note, I don't think people really see this from the outside, is that that uh, there is a very very strong, broad community um, that um, 
is on Slack and on our listserv. So um, we often talk in libraries about having researcher, you know, what, what do the researchers want? What do they need? And um, this is a, this is amazing community because you have thousands of them at your fingertips. You can ask them questions about research data management or whatever you want and, and you get a response very quickly. Um, so it's, it's really nice to have this sort of community, but it's not apparent on our website um, and it, it's a real value. Um, outcomes, um, we often hear, you know, back from our surveys, we conduct surveys before and after the workshops. Um, and, and sort of this is where we're, you know, where we're understanding where, where we need to meet new needs and, uh, you know, wh where we're doing well, places we're doing well. But um, I, I pulled up an example um, of a paper recently where they also talk about um, the training and how it's helped with their, their own workflows and developing a modern da data workflow for regularly updated data. So this just came out recently, and this is by um, Glenda Yenny and et al. And so on PLOS. Um, so um, it's a really, it's, it's just another example. You see a lot of these papers of people saying, um, this really helped us um, improve our workflows um, and get better at what we do. Um, and also we see from these surveys, we see that from the outcomes that people are um, really at the top of the list is confident, more confident after they take a workshop. They ha feel like they have that jump start. Um, and, um, you know, there's, there's other things where they, they feel like um, they know a little bit more about reproducibility. And so we know that we're, we're um, improving, uh, we're helping people um, from our survey da data. Um, and, and then our library carpentry core objectives. So coming back to library, library carpentry, um, really, again, um, th this one helps us, uh, um, you know, this, this helps us sort of get a step up and learn um, more about the spacing and get more involved. And so cut through some of these jargon terms that we uh, have heard um, it, it, you know, over the years. Um, we try to just help with the demystifying that. Um, it just identifying best practices on how to work with data, um, how to programmatically transform what you're doing. Um, we talked about automation, how to talk to researchers and IT system colleagues um, this definitely helps with improving those conversations. Um, and I mentioned automation before, but um, this is, these are some of the things that library carpentry um, really helps with. And we try to um, make this available to most, um, most people. Uh, so our audience is really anyone who works in libraries um, um, because I think you need everyone on board. Um, and a good example of this, uh, I, I equate library carpentry to a, pro a program called 23 Research Data Things that was um, uh, run in Australia not, not too long ago, maybe two, three years ago. And the drive behind that program was um, they realized that libraries really needed to, to learn more about research data management. Um, but a lot of the training was, as, was more at an expert level. And so they, they, they created this program at different levels so people could enter and feel more comfortable about knowing about the research data management space. And they had thousands of librarians across Australia attend this um, that are not research data librarians that were um, interested in hearing that was important um, and wanted to get involved. And so, uh, you know, library carpentry, I feel like is very similar to that, bringing everyone on board, um, you know, starting at sort of this first step, this entry entry level, and working your way up. Um, and, um, you know, the, this is a, a slide from Liz Lyon, one of my colleagues on the um, Shifting to Data Savvy report. And she also talks about um, having sort of this team approach to um, data science, um, to, you know, data, data and software um, services in your library. Um, everyone needs to be involved. I think everyone has different, different um, perspectives, different approaches. But these skill sets are important throughout, and um, you know, it really is something that you can't have just one person doing anymore. You really need everyone involved, and and so not even just at at uh, at your institution, but in a community. And so um, you know, this is one of the things that the network, the um, library carpentry, and the and the carpentry's network brings is 
helping people sort of work across um, these institutional, um, it, it, across institutions, across regions. Um, and uh, there's, there's really a good example of this, the New England Software Carpentry Library Consortium. Um, that's a mouthful, um, but their abbreviation is really uh, fun. Nesquik, it sounds a lot like Nesquik. Um, and um, really, there's a lot of Ivy League li libraries, uh, university libraries that came together, um, but they're expanding out into the New, New England area. And what they do is they really share, um, they share the training across these institutions and it's become a great network for them to collaborate with together on uh, research data and, and software services. Um, so it's been really, it, they, they've taken this consortium model um, and shared uh, a membership to the Carpentries between their libraries. Um, and then um, you have sort of a local example in Germany, um, ZB Med, um, the ZB Med, Med Library, um, uh, one, Recently, they started teaching a lot more of the Carpentries uh, material, starting off with library carpentry, and now they're starting to teach software and data carpentry to their community. Um, but they they also do something where they hold hacky hours afterwards, these sort of sessions to hack away at things, um, to continue to learn, to continue to develop together with, with uh, people that have taken the training um, to practice what they've learned. And um, another example, um, which I thought was interesting, was um, uh, Tip Hanover has, has used the Carpentries um, training to pair it with uh, FAIR uh, data and software training, something which was really, really important in Europe and, and Australia, and something I feel like we're starting to get um, our feet wet in, in the US and start to do more with. Um, but this was an innovative program, I think, at Tip Hanover. And it paired librarians with with uh, with researchers, and it was a really great opportunity um, for the for the librarians to understand the researchers' needs and the researchers to understand what libraries brings to the table. Um, so, you know, carpentry sort of helped brought and and the fair topic brought these groups together. Um, and then we also, as a community across uh, um, regions, you know, across institutions, developed sort of these fair data and software things. Um, that were sort of primers, these uh, um, brief guides that people could use um, to get familiar with FAIR and different disciplines and domains. And so we hear that more groups are, are planning to add um, different disciplines to this. And, and, uh, and we're going to try and teach these as well. I think this is a flexible model that we're going to have, we're going to think about in libraries, think about in research institutions, um, that people, when people can't attend a one week or a two day workshop or even a one day. Uh, these can be invaluable maybe. So how can you get started? You can tr contribute to a lesson. Um, I mentioned they're on um, uh, GitHub. So you can see there's a, uh, this is a library carpentry open refine lesson. And so anyone can contribute to them. We have a group of maintainers that sort of monitor that and talk about whether um, to accept the change or if whether more discussion needs to happen. So a lot of discussion happens in, in GitHub. Um, and so uh, that's a great place to collaborate. Um, and then um, you can host, you can help, you can teach. Um, you know, that's really like the, a good way to start is initially host a workshop, see what it's all about. Um, maybe become, go on and become an instructor, get certified, or, you know, attend something else to help and get an understanding of how a workshop happens and then decide whether you want to teach and, and move forward. Um, but it's really helpful to get your feet wet that way and, and, and understand what, what's involved. Um, and you can also become a member. Um, so we have a, a growing list of members from across the world that have become members at different levels, um, and they train a local cohort. Um, sometimes that can be shared between the library and other um, parts of the institution, but this really helps the library become that hub again of all these activities um, by partnering with all, the, all those groups. And so in the past, I've partnered with the graduate school or research computing. It really depends who's ready, you know, who, who, which one of those groups is ready and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and ready to go. And um, I'm willing to, to uh, think that at your institutions, probably the graduate school, um, because again, they hear from industry 
that uh, these data and software skills are are desperately needed in industry. Um, so there's a lot more information on our Library Carpentry website. There's the link librarycarpentry.org. I recommend that you go there um, and and find out more. Um, but I wanted to turn it over to David um, David Kane who uh, can introduce himself and talk a little bit about the upcoming uh, training that we're hosting in Dublin. Hello, thanks Chris. Hello, uh, I'm David. I'm, um, I'm the guy in the yellow vest on the runway landing the plane here in terms of the logistics of the, uh, of the training. Um, the, it's, it's going to take place in the James Joyce Library in UCD. Uh, I'm not in UCD myself, I'm in somewhere else in Waterford, but uh, um, uh, the guys in UCD, J uh, James Malloy and Peter Hickey, uh, have been very helpful in accommodating us. And um, it's a fantastic venue. In fact, Chris has been there. Um, the, there. There will be, there's a requirement in the instructor training for breakout sessions, and we have uh, the required breakout rooms in close proximity uh, to each other, so that um, uh, so that there isn't too much toing and froing, and we'll have a, a nice uh, uh, lunch laid on, and uh, um, it'll be it'll be it'll be a positive experience for you all. And also, we've got a we'll have two instructors and two helpers, one of whom will be myself, and one of whom uh, hopefully will be Conrad. Um, uh, and basically, um, if you're attending the Libra conference, it's really not very far from uh, where that is happening in Trinity. So uh, I can only say that it's uh, it's it's sort of it's well set up. If you have any questions about the logistics, um, just put them in the uh, attendee chat there. Um, uh, we look forward to seeing you. Is there anything Thank I've you. missed out? No, Chris? no, I, I, I think uh, uh, the venue is beautiful. So yeah, I can speak to it. It, it's really serene and uh, um, it's it's a nice place to be. Um, the spaces are also very nice at the UCD library. So yeah, thanks. it really does look like that picture. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, it it uh, that's the library uh, looking over uh, overlooking yes. upon. So, yeah, it's a beautiful venue. Uh, so also we have one of our, um, thanks David, uh, we, we have uh, one of our, it's, um, the instructor trainers, Julian Schneider, um, who can tell us a little bit more about um, the instructor training. Um, so Julian, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Hi, I am Julian Schneider. I am a uh, team lead for Eagle Eye, which is a um, open access, open platform re uh, repository for well really discovery tool for research objects. Uh, I am also a library carpentry instructor. Um, I can actually instruct in anything because really, the, the, the instructor workshop is teaching you how you teach a carpentry's workshop, which is great because that means you don't have to know any lesson backwards and forwards. I certainly didn't uh, when I took the instructor training because I took the instructor training purely by accident because I was a little bored and someone invited me to go, so I went, and I had never taught a thing in my life, nor had I been interested in teaching. And what really hooked me in this two-day workshop, which um, mine was actually in person, uh, the in instructor trainer was uh, Greg Wilson, one of the founders of the Carpentries. And I became really fascinated with the idea of how you motivate and demotivate people in learning, in a learning situation, and how you create a safe space for learning where people aren't intimidated and where you can start to learn coding slowly and fearlessly because it doesn't matter that it's completely alien, which it, it is to me. And we don't do a lot of live coding in the library carpentry courses, 
but you do do live demos of things like open refine and um teaching command line. So you are up there, you know, typing as you're teaching. And the workshops kind of get you introduced to that system and you have some practice and everyone it seems like finds out that they're initially better at it than they thought they were. And it's it's fun having that discovery for yourself and then watching other people have that discovery as well. And so when you end when you come to the end of the two days, you've had plenty of practice in um, your initial attempts at instructing if you've never done it before. And you also learn what motivates people, what turns people off when you stand up there. I'm sure we've all been in the workshop where the instructor stands up there and says, oh, you just do this and you just do that. And, oh, this is easy. And meanwhile, you're thinking this is not easy. Um, so we avoid all of that. And you're you sort of – it teaches you how to become aware of when you're doing it because I definitely say just way too much. I try not to. Um, the other thing that we learn is how to – this isn't – much of the workshop is instruction, but there is the part of it that is how to construct, for instance, a, quiz, a, a good quiz. And if you construct a multiple-choice quiz – how can you construct it so that not only do you know that they have it right or wrong, but if they got it wrong, figure out where they went wrong in their thinking about the concept. So it, it tells you more than just a yes or no. Uh, I found that really fascinating, the, the theories behind uh, well-constructed quizzes and well-constructed lessons. So you do get some idea of lesson development as well which is another great way to contribute to the carpentries. But so the two-day workshop uh, that I will be teaching, and I'm very excited about that, is you're not going to be learning specific lessons. You're going to be learning um, how to teach uh, without demotivating people and how to improve your teaching as you go on because the carpentries are all about con constantly assessing. So not only do you assess your students, they'll be assessing you and your teaching as you go through workshops. So in the instructor lessons, you'll be learning um, how to run the workshop, what the, different what the different kinds of assessment are, and how you can use them to actually improve your teaching as you go through a workshop. So if somebody writes a sticky note that says, you speak too quickly or... Um, i still confused about this concept, when you come back from the break, you can address those things. So it's a constant cycle of improvement. Uh, I think my five minutes are up, so I'm going to toss it back to Chris. And I'm you know, happy to take any questions at the end. Yeah, I think, I think uh, there's unfortunately, there's no ball to toss on this. <laughs> but um, <laughs> no, so thanks, Julian, for, uh, for giving um, giving sort of an overview of the instructor training process and, uh, um, you know, again, so Julian will actually, be there. Can I take the ball back for a second? Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to add that there's, there's a little bit more to, more to the instructor certification because once you take the two day workshop, there's a few more things you have to do through what we call checkout. So you'll, need to take part in one of our online discussion calls. Uh, you'll need to make a comment or make an improvement on one of the lessons, and we actually give you some of the lessons um, where those, you know, those might, it might be easier to comment than not. And then you'll need to go through a five-minute live demo uh, with, with a, a demo, and demo person. And what they'll do is you choose the lesson you want to demo, and they'll pick the place where you are to start teaching it, and you teach five minutes of it. And it sounds a lot scarier than it actually is because it's over before you realize it started. Um, but all they're checking on is that you can basically just teach five minutes of a lesson and that you're applying some of the carpentry training. That's all it's really doing. Um, that's the most intimidating thing to a lot of people. 
but it's um and it scared the crap out of me, but I got through it. So um, uh, I think they do a dry run. Done, then you... What? Sorry, I think you do a dry run of that in the the training anyway, isn't that right, Julianne? Uh yes. Yeah, well, you do. I think you practice with partners. Yeah. Yeah. So it's um yeah you get a lot you get a lot of practice in in the workshop it's very hands on, and so you and there's also a good there's a list of suggested uh, lessons that are good for demos so we give you we give you a lot of help in in choosing a good one to go with for any one of the three lesson plans uh, software data or library carpentry whichever one you want to choose and once you're certified to teach you can teach anything in any one of what we call the lesson plans. So you're you're not certified in any particular carpentry. You're certified to teach any any or all of them. Um, so okay. Anyway, that was that's the, the the end process of becoming an instructor. Once the workshop's over, you do the demo, you do the discussion, and you do um, a comment on the lesson. And there's no particular order in which you have to do those. So okay, let's let me jump in. Hi. So I'm now here. <laughs> Sorry for being late today. Uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I mean, let's let's have some questions from the audience. Uh, uh, I I see um, Janette, for example, um, mentioned that she uh, is trying to engage with the Danish community and and has a bit of a hard time to get them on board uh, for for doing uh, engaging more with with data skills. And um, but of course, there's there's ways of of as you say, I mean, if you have a welcoming environment and put this in in everyday context and the atmosphere is right, then um, and also, um, as you said, Juliane, I also when I took this this instructor training, it it also was kind of hard for me to to put myself into this role as a teacher. So I think it's both both sides have their challenges in terms of. Um, getting the getting it getting it right and also having the right atmosphere to feel comfortable in this situation. Um, so, have you have you um, other advice on how people um, might uh, might get uh, get involved in in this types uh, type of things? And what what do you do to to follow up after after these workshops to keep people? Uh, engaging with with the, what they learned uh i i can uh i can start because i uh <laughs> i i uh i feel like uh jeanette <laughs> maybe yeah. knows some of the answer um but um she was in that workshop with us about shifting to data savvy and uh mm. yeah. um it's it's just a lot of hard work um I'm not sure there's an easy, easy solution. Um, it, you know, really it takes, um, it takes like some momentum to create a community. Um, but I think, I think one of the, the other um, shoes to, or, you know, the other foot to fall um, to help this happen is that um, we need manager, managers to understand how much time it, it takes to understand what's changing. Um, you know, in, in, in research and, um, you know, sort of align learning with um, mm -hmm. our projects. Um, so yeah. build in learning opportunities. Not, in not one chat, one, one, uh, one workshop and then it's done. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of like how it's presented to us uh, still, I think. And it, we have a lot of um, services out there that provide training and, and it's, um, you know, you, you'll learn one particular tool, but it's not part of a, an overall context, you know, it's not part of, um, so you, you could go out and learn XML, um, but then, you know, like you come back and, um, you know, sort of management or other people feel like, okay, now apply it. Well, you know, it's not that easy. Um, it needs to be seen in a, in a, in a wider context of like, why are you learning XML? You know, what, what do we need that for that, you know, what what particular um, you know project are we trying to work on? Um, you know, I, it, that that's that's just one of the areas that I've seen that is is challenging. Um, but it sounds like they have a really good opportunity because they have a community that they've been yeah. um, developing, mm -hmm. and they so they have some buy-in 
from managers and uh, you know some some support. Yeah, how much how much do you think uh, does the does the language play a role? I mean, I I heard from Conrad and others. I mean that they also deliver this in in German. I mean, does this happen often or? Yeah, it's uh, it's something that I think um, it it you hear the you see this more often now, like of a yeah. conversation threads about doing lessons in Japanese or doing it in mm. German, mm. Um, because it, it, you know, it helps with that comfort level. It yeah, helps. Indeed. with the, That's what I felt. <laughs> yeah, we, we so we mm. need to we we need to to translate the lessons uh you know that that happens through community members but um mm. google translate's getting better and better yeah. every day <laughs> yeah. so um that's yeah. one one opportunity yeah. is to sort of teach the lessons um through translate i don't know how good it is with german <laughs> yeah well <laughs> it's, it's okay i mean from from my perspective it's it's really depending on the audience i mean librarians might feel more comfortable when it's in German and when you target PhD students. And I think it's not a good move to do it in German because you exclude some and this is not welcoming <laughs> environment, obviously. Yeah, but let's see, I mean, we have not, we have not started yet to deliver the, deliver, deliver workshops because we felt, let's have the trainers ready first. So how uh, do you see the approaches? Is, is it more typical that institutions book a training or getting the trainers ready first in terms of building a group of trainers first at the institution uh uh we've seen all sorts of different approaches mm. <laughs> yeah. um yeah I, I, I sometimes people uh, institutions will want to become a member right away mm. um sometimes they'll um you know, take the curriculum, they'll take the training material, they'll take the lesson material and they'll um, pilot and they'll, they'll, they'll mm. train internally. So we saw that at National Library of Medicine. Um, and, um, you know, sometimes people start off as community members without even being an instructor, certified instructor, um, um, you know, or just coming in new and, and wanting to help. Um, mm. And yeah, so you know, we've, we've had maintainers of our lessons mm. that haven't been certified instructors for, yeah. you know, mm. at least a year or so longer even mm. that. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they, they sort of adopted, learned about Carpenter's way of doing things. And, um, you know, as they, as they went, went along. Um, so, um, yeah, so it's kind of like different entry points. Um, people, mm sometimes host the workshop or they help. Um, I've, I, um, I found it really helpful. Um, so I've attended a workshop uh, at Duke University in the genomics lesson um, where I had no background in the area, but I, um, I had taught um, Unix shell and I sat in, you know, some parts of the training that were, um, that taught that, that tool. And so it was really, great experience to learn how other instructors teach but also to pick up the context as i was helping mm. um and then gain familiar familiarity in order to teach it later on um so really it's kind of like a nice um entry point um of connecting with your researchers um mm. yeah yeah so uh there's a question in the chat are you are you planning to come to canada for uh teaching their library carpentries <laughs> i think uh david and julian want to go to canada mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we had a really good experience. Or... that'll be fun yeah that'll be fun yeah <laughs> yeah so we had a really good experience in uh, calgary um yeah and uh and we've heard a lot of um interesting in canada um and you know, I think I think that's a possibility. It's always a possibility. Um, yeah. So, uh, and and yeah, Quebec is uh, the wish of Martine, obviously. <laughs> so, yeah, well, that, Quebec is yeah, fine. Okay. And yeah. That's a great place. <laughs> uh, I mean, you sometimes also uh, link these trainings to other events, right? I mean, if there's something coming where you might have a satellite event and. 
uh, and the library carpentry or this might be an option as well, right? Yeah, it's try to align it with another event is some like we're doing a library, but it doesn't have yeah, to be. Um, yeah. yeah, we ran we ran um the Calgary workshop over the summer. Um and um I, I remember this moment where um some of the data from our workshops was um there was being reported on and one of the members of the carpentry said, Hey, hey, did you know that librarians when they take most of the workshops and in like at probably the summer? <laughs> and uh it's it's the only time that we have free time, basically. And so that's when we hosted it and was pretty popular um in August, uh, mm -hmm. when people had free time. So that's another good time to uh to do um but we don't do the in-person um trainings too often and we don't have yeah. too many trained um trainers that mm -hmm. you know so julian is a uh, is a rare um case in the carpentries and not too many of the trainers out there and so julian and tim are some of them i think there are like maybe three other or four other um trainers that have a library background um mm -hmm. so this is a special one that you know where we have um people with a library background that can provide a little bit more context and uh you know, it's it's definitely helpful. Um, this instructor training for librarians. Um, yeah, I don't know if Julian has any more to add here. Uh, not really. <laughs> no, <laughs> you, you covered it. <laughs> but you want to go to Quebec, right? So, so yeah. whoever wants to go yeah. to Quebec, um, mm -hmm. they have to convince Julian. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <clears throat> Okay, so yeah last um are there any more questions from the audience please please feel free to put your questions in the chat so anything else um I think it's it's a really a unique opportunity. I mean, I did this training only only in an online course, and of course, I mean, having all people in the room <laughs> as as in this instructor training, it's something I would have loved to do, but it's not happening that often. So, grab the opportunity. Um, oh, there's uh, Birgit. There's uh, yeah. actually a lot of um, French questions, I think, or oh, um, comments. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I just wanted to mention that. I um, <laughs> yeah, I don't speak French. <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. I wanted to say that, um, mm -hmm. uh, that that's something I've been trying to work on. Um, so just like how you're saying, you want to work on maybe some German language mm -hmm. lessons, and uh, um, been trying to talk to um, colleagues in France, um, in uh, Bordeaux, and uh, the National mm -hmm. Library, the BNF. Um, about <laughs> translating because you know i think i think particularly um in france but also like a good part of the world speaks french too and uh and so ha you know like translating lessons to french would be great and been trying mm -hmm. to work on this as well um so if anyone's interested that that's something we really need help with yeah and, and have you delivered workshops in france already or it's uh Awesome. No, we're we're kind of hoping that someone from mm -hmm. France goes to the instructor training in Dublin. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So we yeah. have at least one yeah. certified. Uh, I think that yeah, in general, carpentry's workshops have been held in France, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. I I think they often ha happen in English or or you know there hasn't been too many. But one of the members of the carpentry's um, mm -hmm. Francois Michino, he he just moved to France, um, yeah. so might have yeah. more there mm -hmm. more activity yeah 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 it might no, at some point it might be good to have um uh, these these contacts um ready when when people uh want to get started in a country like you if you have uh had a workshop there and to get them uh in, in touch and <laughs> help convince the management as you say i mean for some it might be yeah really uh, necessary for for us it was easy but for it's likely a bit more work. Yeah, I, I know. I've known of institutions, libraries that mm -hmm. have been asking for. I don't know. Seems like three, four years. So you have you have volunteers for the French <laughs> translation yeah. coming up there. Oh Thank yeah, you. okay, yeah. Anthony. Yeah, yeah, all right. I knew yeah. someone would save. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 
All right, we'll get mm-hmm. in touch with us. Yes, yes, right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, please reach out. My email is the, yeah. it's here at the end. So if yeah. someone wants, to, mm-hmm. if you want to reach out, um, I can connect to um, with developing the French lesson. Yeah, and also if there's other um, uh, people from other countries where, where you feel there might be someone in your country, but you simply don't know them. So I also, when when we started, I mean, I. I searched on on Twitter who was kind of tweeting about these things and then, you know, kind of find them. But yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, then, yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. And uh, this was a very nice session with you. And yeah, uh, looking forward to see you in Dublin. I will, I will certainly come uh, on the day when the instructor t- training is delivered towards the end uh, to say hi. And yeah. And yeah, please, please uh, spread the word. Uh, all of you, you participated and thank you all for your participation. So nice, nice afternoon and bye bye all. Thanks everyone. Thank Thanks you. everyone. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye. bye.